Blog Hello, Radio. Hello, everyone. This is Chris, and I'd like to welcome you to another conversation about your Kundalini Awakening experience. I'd like to welcome you to this program, and I'd also like to welcome Amelia Santara. So I'm going to put her on. Hello, Amelia. Hello, Chrism. And, hello, uh, Chrism. Hello. I hope things are going well in Ireland at this moment. Yes, things are going very well. I'm not in the um, Kingdom of Kerry tonight. I'm in Cork, which is known as the Rebel County. So greetings from Cork to you and Santa Rosa and to all our listeners around the world. And a, a, a fond, rebellious greeting to you as well. Uh, right now we're, you know, broadcasting both from Santa Rosa and from Cork, the rebel county of Ireland. And uh, I'd like to welcome everybody who may be in the chat room. Uh, Amelia, do we have people there? Yes, Chris, and we do. We have a few people. We have um, Steve is there, Fashji is there, Lorna is there, and guests with numbers are there. So, again, well, welcome. welcome, everyone. Welcome, Steve, Lorna, Fashji, uh, and, and everyone else, really, who is there. It's a, it's a pleasure to be able to have this conversation with you listening live. I would like to also welcome everybody who's listening in the archives that is that in the future, and uh, hello to you all. Uh, for information on where to find out uh, some more about perhaps aspects of your Kundalini Awakening experience, you can go to KundaliniAwakeningSystems1.com. You can go to the Facebook groups of Kundalini Awakening! Exclamation point. You can go to uh, YouTube channel, which would be Chrisam Kundalini there, and there's about, I think, 297 videos uh, that may help you with your particular aspect of the equation. Uh, there's also a uh, Kundalini Awakening Systems 2 on Facebook. That's a group on Facebook. And then on the Yahoo Network, we have Kundalini Healing and Kundalini Awakening Systems 1 Yahoo groups. I'm going to try to move my little portable studio here uh, over into the well into another place here in the house um, as you know I, I get fairly challenged sometimes with the technology uh, to to put on this this program uh, before I get started I would like to send out a level of, of thank you to Amelia and husband John for allowing this program to occur at all. Without their generous help, one moment. Without their generous help, <laughs> um, this show wouldn't be happening. So thank oh. you, thank you, John and Amelia. Okay, Chris, and um, you're very welcome. And um, it's a pleasure, a privilege for us to do this, so that other people can hear the Kundalini teachings that come from the Kundalini through you. And I just want to say your voice is warbly. Uh, perhaps it's because you're one, you know, moving around, but it has been warbly. So maybe if anybody is listening, they could let us know if it's just I'm hearing it that way or if it is so um, for everybody. Uh, one moment, please. Okay, all right then. So, yeah, if we can do a little bit of a check here. Uh, can anybody hear me clearly enough? Yes, Sashi says I'm correct. Your voice is warbling. So that means, um, I don't know, maybe go back further from the mic maybe or something. 
Okay, well, I am I am back further from the microphone. I'm I'm in the the, the familiar working chair that I like to do this show from. I had to move from the kitchen to here, and uh, hook up various I, uh, devices here so that uh, so that it would work. But I it, it should be coming in fairly clear at this point. Is that true, everyone? Can anybody call in and give me an idea? No, you're still warbling a little, not quite as much. I wonder are there two devices right next to each other? That seems to have an effect. What? Okay, Rosemary is on. Let's put her on, and she'll she'll tell us. Hi, Rosemary. Hi. What I hear is there's crackling, like not loud in the background, Kristen, but your voice is strong. Ah. Well, thank you, thank you, Rosemary. I'm gonna. Take it out of the case here. Maybe that'll do it. Uh, Amelia, I don't know about the whole two things. I'm sitting here in the chair with an iPad. That's what's happening. So I don't know that there's any kind of another uh, device going on here. Anyway, uh, there should not be any more crackling. And there should not be any more itinerant noise. Are, are you hearing it still, Amelia? Yes, Chris, and I am. Huh. It's it's not as bad as it was now, so maybe just continue and 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 sometimes it settles down. So perhaps begin and see. Okay. Well, the first thing I'd like to do is I'd like to uh, offer anybody that that has a question about their Kundalini awakening experience the opportunity to call in to the show. Uh, the number is three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. Uh, that's United States Area Code 347-934-0026. And I'd like to talk uh, with you today about systems that proclaim to pretty much answer all your questions about the Kundalini. Uh, you know, as to religious tradition, uh, they're like uh, there's a whole... Uh, line of understanding from some of the ancient Vedic uh, tradition in India called Sanatana, and uh, that's making a real big resurgence uh, in the world today, vis-a-vis the Internet and, and people that are really, uh, you know, feel great attraction towards that. But there are other smaller out you know, proclaim to know everything there is to pretty much know about Kundalini, and they try to lump it into one big generalized concept of, well, if you do this, and then you're going to go to to 73 different paths to enlightenment, and you know, and you know, it's just it's it's absolutely incorrect. There there are far more than 73 different paths to enlightenment to even suggest. A numerical value to the path to enlightenment is to tell a person who is who is astute enough to discern that wow this this probably isn't the best information that you're receiving right now. It's very similar to the hundred and forty four thousand people that'll that you know that are there for for you know another civic religion you know these these people get these ideas and and a lot of the time, these ideas are fostered by an entity or a group of entity, a, a consciousness uh, that has that has many memberships within it. So, so we're talking probably more about an egregore of many different consciousness espousing a certain religious ideology uh, in order to to manipulate uh, large numbers of humanity, five cents kind of still sleeping humanity on this world. With Kundalini, I find that there is no hard and fast, simple truths that control large groups of Kundalini awakening people. Everybody has their own unique karma. Everybody has, and because of that unique karma, we have a unique experience within the Kundalini. It's not going to be the same. The problem with some of this is that um, when you mix fabrication with truth, it takes on aspects of truth because truth is such a powerful, 
powerful uh, experience with a, with a person that that uh, it's very difficult for people to sometimes discern because well this part's true and and I've I've experienced that but and so therefore because this one part is true therefore that must make the entire thing true and this is not true this is not true <laughs> so I'm just going to go back uh, Amelia are you, is it coming in and clear now do I need to call back into the show. No, Prism, you do not. It hasn't proved, and Steve has very kindly offered to um, monitor it from the chat room, and if you deteriorate there, he's going to let me know through type. So I very much appreciate that. So you've got, you've got it now covered in two ways. Much better, much, much better. Really good. Thank you, Steve, and thank you, Amelia. Thank you, Rosemary, as well, everybody, for putting in and and helping us work on the sound quality of this show. Uh, as I was mentioning to, to Amelia earlier, I am talking into an iPad. I'm holding this iPad, and, and it's uh, they give you this mobile studio here with uh, with Blog Talk Radio. I, you know, I think it's a it's a pretty good thing. It's it, it's not too hard to work, but it, you know, sometimes the technology itself uh, comes under pressure from kundalini itself kundalini itself will begin to mix and and sometimes it causes a level of interference with uh, electronic products such as laptops i have to say i gotta hand it to apple and this ipad it has withstood the kundalini the best out of all of them i've had this since 2012 i think and uh, almost every show i will have to say every show that we have done has come through this ipad and it's still working so kudos to to the Apple engineers that designed this iPad. Anyway, back to the topic. So uh, when a when a group or or a, con- a group of consciousness mix in certain aspects of truth uh, with certain aspects of shall we say supposition or guesswork, uh, it begins to take the guesswork into areas of truth within the the mindsets of individuals, and so. It can be very difficult uh, to unravel the, the the actual kernel of truth, or, or the you know, without taking the entire concept itself in as a whole. And you know, and the concept itself as a whole is not bad. I typically don't, you know, I don't. Uh, you know, if if the noble qualities are being followed, noble qualities being forgiveness, uh, tolerance, patience, love kindness, compassion, service, you know, all of these types of uh, of behaviors are the noble qualities, that which is true within the aspects of love and the the reflection of of divine love from grace into our hearts as a a large generalized population of awakened people. Uh, You know, if the noble qualities are being followed, then, you know, I can't. I'm not out here to try to, you know, prove everybody right or wrong. That's not my job. My job is just to give people information about their Kundalini awakening. However, sometimes it begins to it begins to influence people one way or another, or or causes them to spend money in one way or another, or causes them to to divert their attention and their energies, uh, say towards that group of consciousness that believe. You know, uh, one way or the other, and to me that is not truth. To me, that is that is beginning to orchestrate a a fantasy that has aspects of truth within it. The Kundalini, as many of you know, who are awakened or activated in awakening, is very, very, very insistent on levels of truth. So it's far more interested in control and it's you know living out certain fantasies of attachment and desire and uh you know when you mix those that control uh and, and fantasy and desire into a shall we say a program that uh seemingly incorporates Kalini, well then you're going to have some problems um, i would uh, like to suggest to people that there is no one way or 73 ways or 173,000 ways into 
the fields of enlightenment. There are as many ways as there are cells in your body and more. You know, the average human has 17 trillion cells. So, you know, there's more, more than 17 trillion possible probabilities into the fields of enlightenment uh, that a person can take. Each cell has its own consciousness, has its own level of, uh, pardon me a minute here, I gotta, want to make sure I don't turn things off on this iPad, uh, has its own level of evolution and karma and all of this, and they all come together into a gigantic egregore, which is you, which is you. Okay, so, so the you that you are have literally an infinitude of possibilities uh, towards the enlightenment equation. And don't let anybody restrict you through, through mind manipulation or through, through the, the manipulation of your ego's wants and desires and, and attachments. You really don't need to go there. Uh, what you really need to go into is your own kundalini. Your kundalini, and, and, and typically what I have seen is the kundalini will not, okay, you need to turn right, turn left, go straight, then turn right, left, go up the hill, down the hill, into the valley, over towards the pond, veer to the left, beyond the pond, and then go over the bridge, and it'll be on the right-hand side. It won't do that. <laughs> it'll just go in the, go in the general direction of the point. It's not about giving you all the answers, you know. And a lot of these outfits will, you know, they're, they've got it charted so well. Oh, my gosh, you go into the Atman and you got the astral and the causal and the mind and the mental. And you go through there and, 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 and on the left-hand side of the astral, as you go just beyond the uh, causal and the mental, well, on the left-hand side, there's one of the three ways or one of the 73 pathways and there's a good sign there and a stoplight that's to, okay go this way no 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 this is not kundalini and and these these higher states are not chartable because we come into them from such diverse and separate karmic backgrounds we don't get to chart lay out a map of the exact way to get anywhere within the heavenly fields. Heavenly fields are not cartographic. They don't, you don't get a map to them. You can get some signposts that suggest, well, okay, you know, with your Kundalini awakening experience, you're going to have some Kriyas. These are spontaneous body movements that will happen without, without your permission. It'll make you feel like you're a little, like you're possessed or you got something else inside you that wants to express through you and so it's moving your body this way or that and maybe you'll hear a lot of chirping or humming like bees or you know all of the, all of the different kundalini phenomena can be seen as as signposts but they're just they're signposts on the path they're not saying go right go left go forward and and when you get to the uh, to the Atman and you go to the Oversoul and then, you know, to the left of the Oversoul is another one of the 23 paths. No, 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 no. Your equation is going to be unique to you. And the most important thing that you can do is you listen to your Kundalini. Listen to the information that your Kundalini sends you to. Now, if your kundalini sends you to an organ that I'm describing, well, that's a different story. Then your kundalini wants you to have some of the knowledge that, you know, some of the hopefully truthful knowledge that they are offering. And then maybe later on, you know, she'll begin to show you that, uh, you know, part of this is true and part of this is not true. And then here's the truth part and let's continue the journey. Uh, but for the most part, these groups are, you know, they're looking to, to, to convince people that they have the one way. They have the one system. They have the one uh, recipe into enlightenment and beyond. That's another thing that I want to discuss with you is that there is no beyond Kundalini. Beyond is, is, is merely a word that suggests that there's farther to go. Beyond, beyond Kundalini is 
Kundalini. Oh, and then as you go beyond that Kundalini, there's more Kundalini. Kundalini is the divine consciousness. Divinity does not have uh, geographic locales uh, that that go beyond itself. In a way, you can see all around you. You can see the signature of divinity all around you. Look around the room. The you're in. That's divine too. What Kundalini does is it brings it into a a very different understanding, a very different level of comprehension, a very different level of unification and joining with that which the divine has provided with us, you know, for a tool to learn that we are one and we are plural at the same time. We are the, the one Joe rune, if you follow any of the rune things. So that's the one that looks like a Y. We are the two that are one and the one that is two. We are the branch that's forked. Okay, we are we are we are we are singular and we are plural. We are one and three at the same time. And more, as you as you go outside of the five sense paradigm, we are even more. There are more angles to add to that. It doesn't mean that, that, you know, well, okay, once you've had kundalini, you know, last summer, you know, I had kundalini, it was, was really good, and now I'm looking for more. No, no, that was not kundalini. That was maybe an experience with chi or, or an experience with, uh, you know, uh, uh, energy modulation within yourself. Like Reiki is pretty good for that type of thing. You know, if you want to feel energy t- temporal, well, then there you go. And then, of course, if you... If you happen to be unlucky enough to have entities come, well, then you can feel that individual energy pull quite often. If you have a question about this topic or any other topic regarding your Kundalini Awakening experience, please call 347-934-0026. And I'd like to bring Amelia Santara on board here. Your Holiness, are are you awake? Hello? Hello, Amelia? I'm awake. (laughs) Hello? (laughs) <laughs> Hello, Kristen. <laughs> so have, have you experienced anything with what I'm talking about, you yourself? Well, yes, I have. Um, I've had um, various experiences. Um, I would have had an experience with a particular group um, myself. So, yeah, hard enough to explain it really, Chrism. And um, but they were an organization. They're very good. They have good hearts. They're very helpful. Um, but they have a very, um, they had a very definite but hidden um, belief that they did have the answers to everything. And I suppose, you know, I was invited and, and, and other people were invited in to explore and to look at A and B within my own life. But what I began to discover was really... Um, it was confined to what they saw as as being the truth. And I really liked what you said there about there was elements of truth in it, um, but it wasn't, what was it you said? It wasn't the whole thing. It was like mixing fabrication with truth. There was some parts of truth. Or, 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 and that or, or, or actually, guess, guessing, and, guessing and wishful thinking. Yes, yes, yes. And that took a little while for me to be able to see and um, clearly. Um, and so, yes, uh, I, and I have seen this on other occasions and in other scenarios as well. I have seen it happen. And um, it's something that can be it's very manipulative, you know. It's very manipulative. And people get, get trapped in it. Um, so, and people are restricted by it. And... Um, yeah, so I think what you're speaking about is is very important. Let me, let me um, ask Josephine. Josephine Smith. Paging Josephine. Ah, <laughs> uh, she comes. She comes. Everybody, we're being we're being we're being honored by the grace and presence of Miss Josephine Smith. Everybody, say hi to everyone. Hello, everyone. Now, Josephine, have you been following our conversation? Yeah. And have you have you encountered a group where, you know, they seem to know everything and you know all about enlightenment? They know exactly what does you know what you got to do and all of that. When I first started looking up after my initial awakening, there were many things on the internet, 
and then I came to Chrism. Oh, you found the worst one. <laughs> <laughs> you went so what's your so you went straight to hell <laughs> in a handbasket. Um, no, just get, kidding. Um, I also, uh, Amelia, I also uh, uh, encountered on my process. I actually even before the Kalini came the second time to this body. I came to a place called. Uh, uh, I, I, I won't say the first name, but it's it had the second part and the part were Psychic Institute, and it had really, really, really good uh, tools that allowed you to begin to validate the uh, the exalted uh, Siddic skills that would come through the Kundalini, and yet, and yet, you know, we're going with. The answer to all things. The answer to all things, and you know, if, if it wasn't of them, then it was invalidating. That was a word they just use. They they use that word ad nauseum. Well, that's not validating. Oh well, that's an invalidation. You know, and and I I was able to take certain truths from them and just discard those that I that I didn't feel were appropriate, at least not appropriate to me. And of course, when the Kundalini uh, awakened, uh, you know, for me in, in 1990, the second time, the the actual physical awakening, uh, uh, you know, that that ideology was was uh, validated. That that <laughs> nobody nobody has the uh, nobody. There is no one way. There is no one correct way. There are many, many, many ways. Sure, there, that one way, like let's just use A Course in Miracles here. Of course, somebody just added it into A Course in Miracles group on, on Facebook. I have no idea who does these things, but somebody added me to that group. And, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm somewhat familiar with, with ACIM. And I think, you know, and, and a lot of people receive Kundalini activation from the practices and the techniques that are involved w- within A Course in Miracles. And so, of course, now I'm on that group, and I'm not quite sure what to do there. But uh, it does not have all the answers, but it does have some very, very, very good practices and concepts. And so, of course, A Course in Miracles is a beautiful, wonderful way. It's a way for you to go if that is what your kundalini is, is guiding you towards. Josephine's looking at me and smiling. <laughs> I'm smiling here too. <laughs> <laughs> and one I, of the reasons I am too is because I there was a time uh, for a little while where the Course of Miracles and um, I I read it and I incorporated some of their you know their daily lessons in, into my life and it had relevance and and it was validating, but there came a time when that was to be let go. It was, it was for me now. I'm speaking about, you know, and um, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, and you know, and, the, and the, you know, I looked into ACIM, and I also looked into that big one, Urantia, the Urantia book. I thought, oh my gosh, uh, for those that aren't uh, familiar with Urantia, it's spelled U R A N T I A, and a bunch of folks in the fifties channeled this huge volume of information about the the anatomy of the uh, of the physical dimension and its intersecting uh, uh, anatomies with the spiritual di- dimension and the you know all of this huge book and you know look into that and you know and then God created the angels and then God created the you know the mosquitoes and you know all of the different things uh not that i'm making any kind of a you know segue between angels and mosquitoes except they both have wings uh there are parts of the belief systems are this way too so there's parts of christianity that are spot on with the kundalini there are parts of buddhism that are spot on with the kundalini there are parts of hinduism spot on with the kundalini there are parts of shamanism that are spot on with the kundalini there is not 
one way to truth. And I I really want people to really begin to understand this, that it's your Kundalini that will begin to direct you into informational sources that are open to, to help you in your equation. But it may not be the whole truth. She's, she may just be giving you a little bit of a classroom to help you move on. So I don't want you to... I just want to advise you not to to get sucked into the degree that you listen to other people that are there and say, oh, no, this is the only way. Oh, no, 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 this, this, this is it. This is the way. You know, and that goes for the same for what I'm telling you in all of these broadcasts. Don't you believe everything that Kusum says totally applies to you and your situation? It may, but it's there may be a smidgen of helpfulness that can come to you through these broadcasts. I'm not I I today absolutism. Absolutism means that is an absolute quality. There is nothing else. Just this. And this is what you get. Take it or leave it. This is all there is. I don't I don't do that. I don't speak in the terms of the absolute. I speak in terms of my experience and in what I am being given through the awakened kundalini to give to you. And today I'm being given through the Kundalini to, to let you know that human systems of, of a five-sense production uh, do not have the, uh, the, the ultimate truth of what Kundalini is or is not. So, I think... Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I think what, what, what can happen is that you know, we're in a group, and as as we progress in the group and as we become, I suppose, submerged into, you know, the philosophy within the group, in a kundalini context, what I, what I have seen happen um, is the surrender that the kundalini asks from us, for, from the person that it's awakening within, the surrender to it um, is... is sort of not given to the awakening within but is diverted to the philosophy of the group and so a person can be pulled away from from what the kundalini and the kundalini's agenda within themselves because the kundalini, the kundalini in my experience reveals directly to the person it, it sends them here and there it reveals directly and one of the things and I mean I, I'm around a while and, and one of the things that is about your group or your teachings is that they facilitate that process they facilitate not facilitate I don't know if that's the right word but they they um, it is about surrendering to the kundalini not about doing you know um what um what you say it's always connected to the inner divine that is within the person that it's awakening to and that surrender and so that, that there's a huge difference there i'm not sure if i'm explaining that very clearly but well, no, i think i, I might I, be actually <laughs> i i think you did i think you explained it clearly it, it, seriously yeah. it's it's about following what the kundalini tells you to do now you know, when you're early on in your, in your equation, it's hard to discern what the kundalini is telling you to do because you're not used to to receiving that kind of information. And so, so Joseph E. Smith, uh, no relation to Joseph Smith. I just want to make that clear. Uh, Josephine here, Amelia and Rosemary, who have come out here to the to the ashram in Santa Rosa. When when I've noticed when people come here, and so I'm going to use Josephine. May I use you as an example? She's saying yes. Can you really say yes? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so Josephine, and she starts to immerse herself in the freedom of her Kundalini awakening equation. Nobody else has had the the kind of experiences that Josephine has had here, and yet. All of her experiences are being supported, supported by my kundalini, supported by her kundalini, supported by the the aggregate kundalini energy that is here at the house. Um, 
she's had some stupendous levels of information come to her and some very, very strong experiences in addition to those to those uh, uh, levels of information. Uh, She's been doing a lot of spinal sweeping in the dream life. Spinal sweeping a lot in the dream life and to some degree in the waking life as well. And this is a person that is less than a year old or or you're you're about a a one-year-old with regard, yeah. She's about a one-year-old with the Kundalini, okay? And it, it is not following a set pattern. It is not following a set pattern that I have laid down. It's following its own pattern within her that I am being uh, support because I can see the truth in it. My kundalini sees the truth in it. But in your early process, it's difficult to discern the truth from the lie. And one thing that, uh, in addition to what uh, Amelia has said, which I think, you know, what Amelia said is very, very important, we can feel so alone in the early part of our experience that all we want to do is reach out to people that even know the word Kundalini. And then when we find those those people that know that word and they seem to know a lot more about it than we do, we begin to distance ourselves from our own inner communication with the Kundalini and begin to embrace their programming or their, their say, shall we say, absolutist uh, philosophy or, or uh, you know, what, what they say the Kundalini does or does not do and what enlightenment is or is not and what paths are available for enlightenment and how many of those paths there are and all of these types of things. Uh, and so for those of you that are new uh, to the Kundalini, Nothing is more powerful, nothing is more valuable than your trust within the kundalini in you. Forget about what any person says, any corporeal flesh person, unless the kundalini has led you to them. Um, Josephine mentioned that she looked on the internet over and over and over until she was led to, to chrism. And, you know, who knows, you know, in... in, in, in in a year's time, she may be, uh, you know, fully ensconced in ACIM or, you know, Yogananda or some other uh, uh, entity or or, or uh, knowledge source that is completely different from what, I, what I'm teaching. And, and it's her kundalini, her and her kundalini. It is your relationship with your kundalini that matters the most. That relationship that matters the most. Now, she may send you, and I say she as the sacred mother, the shali, uh, the, the sacred feminine. The sacred feminine may send you to certain people, to certain organizations. When I went to this psychic institute, I was, I was led there simply to begin to give validation to the skills that I've been undermining because they didn't fit with the scientific paradigm of this world. So I was sent intuitively and, and, and environmentally, and by environment, I meant, I'm, I, I'm meaning to, to say that my social environment was engineered to the degree that I would be able to be sent to the Psychic Institute in order to learn certain understandings, learn how to ground, learn how to, uh, learn how to see. I mean, although I was already able to see those things, it was just giving me levels of validation that I needed to have at that time. I didn't need to become a minister. They wanted me to become a minister. Of course, they also wanted $800 for that minister to get. And so, of course, you know, I could see see that that wasn't going to work. So, so yeah, begin to understand if you lock that. If if, I'm asking Josephine to lock the door so the wind doesn't make it pound. Thank you. Don't reach out to any port in a storm when it comes to the Kundalini. If you're hearing this broadcast at all, begin to trust that source within you. Begin to trust the source that is giving you the Kriyas. And now some people are going to come and say, well, Chris, how do I tell the difference between an entity and the Kundalini? With entities, any kind of an entity that is going to invade your system, 
shall we say, I'm trying to phrase this in a nice way, uh, a level of uh, presumptive uh, infatuation with your energetic signature that is not appropriate. It is an inappropriate uh, infatuation with with your energetic signature. It should not be inside you. In other words, and yet, if, you know, if you're if you're still able to follow the noble qualities, then that's fine. You you really need to base your opinion of what is occurring within you uh, upon the the uh, active expression of the noble qualities and the noble qualities I explained earlier in the program. For those of you that are just popping in in the middle, go back to the beginning of the program and, and, and I'll give a description of the noble qualities there. If you're still able to do the noble qualities, then you can listen to your kundalini. If you are unable to do the noble qualities, then ignore what is what is giving you, say, a, a, an advice to not do the noble qualities. Ignore that advice and go straight into the noble qualities and wait for your kundalini. It will begin to communicate to you in very specific ways. Sometimes, as I've mentioned in other programs, the kundalini will allow certain levels of entity in, in, uh, in your, into your experience. And, and this is as it should be. The kundalini is testing the individual for their ability to follow the noble qualities, even though, even though they are being guided spiritually against it. And, uh, you know, much of the time, uh, the, the inappropriate entity infestation will occur, and the first thing that they want you to understand is that they are God. It's like, you know, the, those entities that have collected in you, well, I am God, I am the God, Ra. You know, I am Ra, you know, and, and they'll, they'll, they'll couch their terminology with you and go thou upon the masses of humanity and express thine divine condition on them. I am Ra. You know, did I do that well, I Amelia? Mean, did, did that work? Did, did that come through? <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while. Yes, it did. <laughs> And yet, you know, they'll, they, they'll, you know, these this group of entity will use, you know, some ancient names as I am Methuselah, or you know, some Bible thing, or Egyptian thing, or Chaldean thing, or you know, Zoroastrian term, you know, this type of stuff, Babylonian term. And no, no, you just tell tell that group of entities to shut up, and you're only going to listen to your kundalini, and that's that. You know, that is that. And that is all you do. You do not make any other com- commit. You don't even have to say shut up. You just you just you just zero in on the kundalini. You can forget about any voices that you might hear in your head. OK. These same qualities of voices are those that are starting these really, really, uh, in many cases, detrimental organizations, because the people that that are able to hear the voices are also able to be manipulated by those voices. And, and that manipulation may be a, a level of teaching that, that gives you only two ways to go into enlightenment or only see four ways to go into enlightenment, 73 ways or 144,000 ways. You, you know, I mean, it's a very creative uh, uh, level of manipulation that happens upon the masses of people that are coming into a kundalini awareness. Uh, a lot of this, you know, some of the Jehovah's Witnesses or Seventh Day Adventists or Mormons, you know, the Mormons had, you know, Joseph Smith, sorry, Josephine, Joseph Smith had his golden tablets that he found under a rock out there in the East Coast of the United States somewhere. And, you know, it just goes on and on and on with these with these entity-based manipulations. You don't need to buy into it when you have the kundalini, especially in your early activation equation. You just trust the kundalini. Kundalini will not necessarily come to you in a voice. But if it does, there will be no doubt. There will be no doubt. The voice of God in your ear does not require you to pay money. 
The voice of God in your ear does not require you to uh, be limited to certain practices or does not require you to be mean or angry or vengeful to other people. It does not require you to go outside of nobility, of the noble behaviors. Uh, The voice of God typically is just far too strong for a person to even receive. The voice of God through the Kundalini will typically come uh, in a, a intuitive yearning to do a certain thing or not do a certain thing. So as you're, as you're early in your, in your process and you're trying to discern the kundalini from entities, uh, from the external source or from the internal source, just follow the normal, uh, noble behaviors. Let that be your guiding light. Let the nobility of love, the nobility of forgiveness, the nobility of tolerance, the nobility of patience, the nobility of self-discipline, the nobility of compassion, the nobility of service, selfless service for others, the nobility of respect for the environment, the nobility of, of, of respect for God and the infinitude of faces and, and, and languages and sounds that the divine can come through. Let that be your guiding light. If you, if, if, you, if you trust no man, no woman, trust that. Trust your kundalini, which is both male and female at the same time. And if you have any questions about this uh, conversation, uh, please call 347-934-0026. And I'd like to go ahead and bring Rosemary on. Wake up. Wake up, Rosemary. No, no. Wake up. Oh. <laughs> I've been waiting I, I for I, my turn because I, I, from I thought the I beginning. heard some snoring. I thought I heard no, some snoring coming, coming from the east. <laughs> well, not me. No, no, of course not. Of course not. Now, Rosemary. No, I'm uh, not, no. When, as soon as you started, I was going to push that one and say, you're talking to me, you know, as someone like that. This is the first thing that I've taken on in my life that I haven't tried to uh, convince everybody, uh, especially my family, my sisters, that here it is. This is what you need to do. And um, I'm sure they're grateful that I haven't done that. But <laughs> and 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 I... In this work and um, <coughs> seminar, I, I think when I evaluate myself, I think I'm doing okay on that. But there's still in my heart, I my find my it's not my heart really, I guess, but like well, I'm I'm thinking in my head, oh really, you want to do this? You really do. You're you're a seeker. You're a, you're always seeking, and and here it is. You don't want to miss it. So I have well, to moderate, moderate my speaking. Now, um, you had you have, you have been a nun for twenty twenty five years, a, a carmelized nun, right? No, oh. no, I was carmelites are are like contemplative cloistered community. I was uh, in a community that was out working in the church I was teaching most well, I was teaching those years I was a hospital chaplain those cheer, those years I was administrative those years I didn't mean caramelized as in onions I meant caramelite my apologies no but uh, <laughs> but there was prayer there was prayer in in every community's life it was not uh, the middle of the night like 2 or 5 o'clock in the morning like those sisters do because these People had to get up and be in front of a classroom of students, or on the floor uh, in the hospital. Um, in in, in um, the you hospital were a Marianite, parents. weren't you a Marianite? Oh no, but there are Marianite sisters. No, I was. I was. Which uh, one was you? Which one were you? Was were the sisters of the Divine Redeemer, and there I got assigned here to St. Paul, and that's how I ended up here. But their main community was Pittsburgh and Cleveland. Uh, Philadelphia, and then they had this hospital here in South St. Paul, and I I was assigned here as a teacher, and um, the sisters, rest of them, eleven others were worked in the hospital. 
Well, I have to I have to congratulate your Kundalini. I think that uh, I think that you were chosen for Kundalini a long time ago, but you had to become divinely redeemed uh, through certain experiences in your life that would allow you to even approach the Kundalini and uh, and and. You know the the the, uh, the Christian Church in, in its many 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 variations uh, has a long history of of uh, being the only way, right? Sure. How were but you, you know, able to break? It's, it's, how were how, how were you able to break out of that? Well, I'm going to rewind a, a, a little bit from what you just said, and I it occurred to me this last week that. It was um, all, all over 45 years that I left home as a young person and joined the community, and you really had to leave behind your family. I mean, you didn't, and you got to see them in the beginning years once a year. You know, my, my mother really, it was hard for her. I was busy, and I was on my life's journey, so I was a little selfish about that. But that's where I am in my life now in a genuine way, in a deeper way, in my commitment to my kundalini, and as well, like that community of sisters was was committed to teaching and bringing the church and doing that, those things. I am likewise committed that other people have this, and and it, it it's not my traditional way of arm twisting, but but that's in my heart. And I said it is like that, because what I have to do now since I've been back even from the ashram, I have deeper changes in myself that if I took a poll, I, I don't want to do it, but if I took a poll of my my husband's family next door or my sisters and asked them what they think about the changes that they see in me, and and they don't probably don't even have words for it, but it's it's really like that young woman leaving home um, to commit herself, and it's taken me all these years to get to the spot where I am now. Well, how did you even decide that you weren't being lied to by Lucifer? Where? Which What's which it? stage is it? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, mean right, I mean, now, as right you, now. Yeah, as, as you as you when you saw the word Kundalini, how did you how did you know that this was right? Well, I, I when I took the seminar is when this began, but I didn't know. I didn't go in with it, and I'm telling people, too, about when I went, there were no bells and whistles and fireworks, and I said, oh, my, this is it. I was just being guided in a very gentle way, and I was free, and I could do it. I don't remember anything standing out in my mind about what I expected to get out of this. I'd never heard that word but one other time before I read it in the Edge magazine, an interview how, with you about Chris. When you say you were being guided in a very gentle way, how did that feel? Um, it's very respected, I guess I would say, because uh, there wasn't any pressure. I just, uh, um, it all worked out. I was available. I don't even know if I told anybody I was doing this, whatever it was, you know? I can't I, tell people how I felt because... My whole life has been kind of like a big Kundalini equation. So my whole life, my reference points are far different from from almost anybody's that I know. But your reference points and and Josephine's restaurant reference points and Amelia's reference points, I think, are far more indicative of what can happen uh, for people as they as they begin to follow the early guidance by the Kundalini to be able to discern. That hey, okay, this 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 sounds this feels good to me. This is something that I feel is, is is worthy of more attention. And I'm just asking you, Rosemary, how how were you able to discern and trust uh, that this this Kundalini uh, approach was was the way for you? Well, I'm thinking that there are a couple times. Over this, this is, will be three years coming up now in September, and there were a couple times that when I would say, you know, I must may, maybe what if I'm crazy, you know, <laughs> and um, I 
it would it would pass. But one of the thoughts I thought was, well, if I am and and I'm making mistakes, well, that's that. You know, I'm not going to die. And I just kept moving along. And and I don't I I haven't had those tests recently. You know, but that's all that I could remember. And I I thought, you know, if if that's how I handled it. Okay. Well, I just kind of lost my. Uh... Can you still hear me, Rosemary? I can. Oh, jeez. Okay. No, this is good. This is good because I just I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to. Jeez, uh, Louise. Blog talk just did something to me here. Well, you can still hear me then, okay? Yeah. I can hear you too, Chris, and very clearly. I I can't I can't see the uh, I can't see the studio anywhere anymore. Lucky me. Don't worry, don't worry. Uh-huh. Um, if anything oh, comes geez. up, I let you know. You're it's fine. <laughs> oh my word. Okay, okay. Well, well, well. Getting back to thank you, thank you, Rosemary. Thank you very much for that. that. That's beautiful. Your your experience is just gorgeous, and so are you. And I want to thank you for that. I, you know, I'm just not comfortable not not uh, having my little studio here. Oh, if it's, if you can trust me, I'll put rosemary on green on blue now, and it's okay. <laughs> Please don't go away and kick back in. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just don't want you to say I'll be back in a minute. Take over immediately. <laughs> Oh, there it is! Oh my gosh! <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, Amelia, let's let's talk to you again, and and I want to invite anybody: Fashji, Steve, um, uh, Julie, anybody who's who's there in the in the chat group to call in too, and because I want to open this up. This uh, this is a very 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 important subject that I've not talked about very much at all. I, I, I if, for those of you that follow the Yahoo uh, group, um, you know I. Sometimes I'm gentle about talking about this with people who are obviously becoming swayed by by a group or an egregore, a group of consciousness that are beginning to to have all the answers and the seventy three paths and. I'm using that because that's the term that the individual used. I'm not going to give the name of the organization at all because I don't feel that they're a, they're a, they're a truthful organization. But uh, uh, I would like people to call in at 347-934-26 and, and, you know, talk a little bit about your journey and what has caused you to be able to trust the Kundalini, to discern the truth from, say, the 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 truth make with wishful thinking guessing or outright untruths. So feel free to call three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. And uh, Amelia, mm-hmm. is, is, do we have someone? Is there a questioner there? Yes, there is, cousin. Let's bring them on. There they go. Hello, person. <laughs> Hello, Master C. You summoned me. Um, <laughs> uh, well, you, you, the voice of God. Now, 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 if the entity comes to you and says, "Hello, this is Fasty," well, then I want. To <laughs> oh my! When you said that, I said, I was telling my wife. I, I said, you know, I, I do hear things in the middle of the night. She says, "Oh, what kind of things?" And I said, "Oh, um, they'll, they'll either call me by name, or there'll be this strange noise that's not." Physical or, or something like that, and and I'll just wake up. They 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 will succeed in waking me up, but I generally just say, um, I have to sleep right now. Okay, go away. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> That's exactly so, right. That's exactly right. Now, <laughs> now you you had this amazingly diverse experience, uh, Fashji. You uh, may yeah. I may I speak yeah. of a little bit? Yeah, yeah. You know, you belong to. To Ekin Carr for a certain amount of time, and Ekin Carr. Uh, can you explain to people a little bit about what Ekin Carr is? Yes, yes. Or what? Um, uh, and then I, I, you know, I want to go back to where my my um, my search actually started from, which was the Kundalini. Um, but um, Ekin Carr. Ekin Carr's um, main premise is that um, each of us 
on our most basic and fundamental nature is soul or consciousness, a unit of awareness. And that unit of awareness is one with all that is, uh, or it is one with the voice of God, which is considered the Holy Spirit. So uh, there are two main uh, tenets in Akinkar, is that that is the light and the sound of God. Uh, so inwardly, as we uh, look, we see the light and the sound. And the sound is supposed to be a fundamental uh, part of this, this whole teaching, and that it has the ability, if you become, and I'm going to use a New Age term, entrained to it, will lead you to higher states of consciousness uh, and higher states of refinement. Well, I was with Ekankar for um, some 35 oh, years or so, went through the whole thing of becoming just neophyte and uh, went up through the ranks, became a member of the clergy, became um, uh, what is called a spiritual aid, which is like a, a spiritual counselor, became an initiator, which I had the authority from the living master to give initiations uh, into the sound current. Well, geez, you know, I, I, I'm such a, a body type person that, you know, I'm always going to challenge everything. I don't care where I am at which point I am in my growth or enfoldment. I'm going to challenge it. And um, I challenged it, and it broke my heart because what I found is that it came up lacking. And so I went on my search. Um, and let me go back to the beginning now of why I say this. I had my, my initial uh, kundalini uh, activation, uh, if you will. I don't know how it's, it's termed, but I'm using activation as it be actually being activated for uh, from its dormant state. Uh, I had that back in when I was 22, and I can't imagine how far back that was. Uh, 72, I think. And um, strangely enough, I, I started to notice that there was this this ability in me uh, to follow what it, what was ever trying to communicate with me, because I kept saying, you know, what is this? You know, I feel like I'm being guided to do something. So I would simply open myself, and I would feel this tug at my third eye, and I would simply follow it uh, whichever way that it, it led me. And um, one night it led me to the Kundalini Yoga Center. And I, <laughs> I didn't realize why I was there. I thought I was there just because these were spiritual people and, you know, uh, they did the yoga thing, but I didn't put it all together into this whole idea that the kundalini was trying to communicate with me and trying to tell me, okay, here it is, you asked for it, and now here it is. Uh, so uh, then I, I searched around, I read a, a book called The Kabbalion by, um, that's probably known by a lot of people who've read any spiritual works, the uh, seven, I think, seven laws of hermetic philosophy. Anyway, to speed past that, I'm, I ended up in Ekankar, and I thought that I'd found everything there. And ultimately, I um, decided to turn away from it because uh, I there were a lot of things that weren't true, okay? Let's, let's be real about this. They just simply aren't true. And... <laughs> yeah. um, how were you able Andrew to, Fesco how were you able, turned me on to Crystal. how were you able to discern that Fasci? what what caused you to 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 be able to discern that i I have something in me that lets me know uh if it sinks to towards the ground, then I know that this is a no answer, and if it rises to the crown chakra um then I know that it's a yes answer. And so you, I started you have, to ask you, you. You have a truthometer. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I started to ask, you know, over and over. It's like, is this really what this is? I mean, you know, yeah, I'm a clergyman, and I, I'm expected to 
to to send out membership dues every year, and I'm expected to to be at the H major seminar, and and for you know as a spiritual aid, I'm supposed to be there, available for people who are having problems on the spiritual path. And I said, okay, that's a wonderful thing, and it, it absolutely um, does satisfy my ego. But is it really what I'm after? Which is you know ultimate realization, of course, and and I don't know what that is anymore. The Kundalini <laughs> has just like disarranged everything inside my head <laughs> and said, listen, we're going to start from a new point, okay? <laughs> Let's start from the point of trust. And um, you will see sometimes point. when I when I when I write something, I'll I'll, I'll say that this is the gesture of friendship between. Uh, the, the the soul or the person and the kundalini. It is this handshake, if you will, just what they used to use when we we're talking about internet. Uh, it's a handshake that says, "Okay, even though I don't know where I am or where I'm going, I'm going to trust that you know more, and I'm going to follow your lead." And so that's that's how I got here. And I, you know, I keep thinking, well, you know, I guess I'm ready to. Um, you know, go off on my own, and and I find myself still here because I I, I have become a part of a family here, um, and I grow by listening. Um, Amelia, Eileen, Rosemary, um, Linda, um, I, I I grow from everyone, and I think that that's a function of this letting go. Uh, even and I see Steve's name here, sure. Um, but this is this is something that we I, I've been wanting to say this for a long time. Thank you very much for allowing me to say this. <laughs> I'm just so very happy to be in this community. I don't agree with everything, but I agree with ninety percent, and ninety percent is strong enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, Fashi, I mean you're. Your consciousness, your presence is definitely a gift for all of us, too. And so thank you. Thank you for being here. And, and, and thank your wife for, you know, for being with you and supporting you on this, on this journey as well. Um, I, you know, thank you, really, really. Thank you for, 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 for giving that, that background and that history. Because a lot of these groups will definitely feed the ego. They'll make you the very right reverend so and so this, you know, and and uh, and you know that's all basically ego ego oriented type of scenario. Uh, Master C, Master C, can I say this? One of the yeah. main things that I can caught, caught is that we should stay away from the Kundalini because it is such, it was such a a volatile type of energy to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it is that. They're right. We're t- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it, it is. It is a volatile energy, but that doesn't mean you stay away from it. I mean, you know, right. it's volatile too. But we run it in our cars. Um, <laughs> okay. You know, the, the, I, what a what a what a beautiful background that you have, though. You, you know, and, and what a what a beautiful level of teaching that I think. Was giving to you uh, what some of the things that you were mentioning about Ekankar is the level of astral travel that occurs with this belief system. There's a very strong level of astral travel, which of course feeds into the Kundalini equation and mm-hmm. the healing, the you know going around and hue, you know doing all of that. Mm-hmm. That is also uh, a level of of, of uh, you know, dipping into the to the nada, the the mm-hmm. sound, and mm-hmm. so you know, I think it it had a lot of benefit for you. No, mm-hmm. it was not the ultimate truth, and no, it did come up short, and it came up short exactly when it needed to come up short for you, mm-hmm. so that you could mm-hmm. move on in your life. But I it think was very were, hard. I think you were guided by the Kundalini the whole way, and yes. that it was. You an education that you could not receive any other way. Right. Right. You know? Right. You know, right. And, 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 and the same with me. You know, I, I had to go through all the different weird things that I had to go through in order to come to this point in time right now. Uh, mm-hmm. But 
what you know you have I think one of the key uh, aspects of your equation and what you just related to us was your truthometer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I use, the it. I use it a lot. And this would be in your spine, right? The, the energy would rise up the spine if it was true or fall back down the spine if it wasn't, right? Exactly. It'll go basal if it's not true. Oh, mm-hmm. That is so cool. <laughs> 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 well, I appreciate everyone uh, giving me the time and uh, uh, the soapbox to stand on and <laughs> well, just to you, tell my story. You are, you, you are loved, my friend, and you have been with this family for quite some time now, since I think yes. was, what, nine? Oh, no, Early? it's only been seven, seven years. Oh, wow, seven beautiful years, friend. Thank you for your presence. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Master C. Good night. So there you have it. There you have it, folks. Yeah, uh, Fashi, Fashi, you know, and the truthometer. I mean, oh, man. Would I have paid money to have had that skill when I – I didn't have a truthometer. I <laughs> I just had to – I was forced to listen but to feel and to – I had to go through all the paroxysms of ego manifestation. And, and I'm not saying that she didn't either, but what he said I think was very, very important – you know, maybe you also have a truthometer in you. Maybe you can feel energy rise when it's true and, and go low when it's not. And uh, basically rising would be going into uh, less density and then going lower would be going into density. And a lie or something that is not true would be less den- or, or more dense than the truth. Um, so when... You- when you encounter these types of organizations, it's not bad to, to want to participate in them. I don't want to give that, but I don't want you to think that the, the, the truth of all truths, because if, if, it is, if it is describing itself as an absolutist organization, meaning this is the way, this is the way and this is the only way, and even if they don't even couch it as the only way, they just say, this is the way, and this is what we do here. Uh, there's a level of absolutism that is cutting out other pathways of, of embracing truth. So if it's a type of uh, that really pushes uh, the, the uh, as Rosemary put, put the arm twisting, but uh, the proselytizing of itself to other people. Uh, Kundalini doesn't proselytize much. It just comes to you. Uh, certain people have been earmarked for this experience to happen to them. They can meditate for the first time in their lives for 10 minutes and slam! There comes the Kundalini and oh my gosh, what do I do now? You know, and what you do now, what you do now is you begin to feel Love and the truth of love. And this isn't love based in ego desires and attainments. This is love in in being guided by that truthometer that, that Fasci has or or being guided, you know, through through different levels of feeling and and intuition that I had and and I'm gonna go over here to Josephine Smith and, and, and Josephine uh, how you say you landed on 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 Christmas and all that, but how did you know that that you weren't being attacked by a, an evil force? I really didn't know. Just it. I was still alive after my awakening, laying on the floor. By after seeing all his videos and reading and reading and reading and reading, it just told me it was right. Well, when you say it told you, did it tell you with words? No, no words. Like in my head, um, the the thought. That was it. So, so, so basically, uh, uh, a feeling of truth was was getting into into your kind of intuition. Yes. 
Okay, you know, she's, she's having a hard time finding the words. And, you know, in many of these areas that we're discussing, it's a hard time finding the words. Yes, Amelia? Hi, yeah. What what happened for me, Chris, and without going into everything that happened beforehand, um, but how did I know that, um, you know, this wasn't, um, <laughs> I wasn't being attacked by an evil force? When I first came to the, the group and I read um, I just one or two of your teachings, um, it resonated in my heart. My That's where I felt the truth. My heart sort of ex- Expanded into the words, into the into what I was reading, and they reached into me as well, completely into the experience that I had had with the Kundalini. So that was how I knew the truth of what, what, you, what I was reading. What had you been involved with before? Like maybe go back like Fashti did. What had you oh. been involved with that kind of led you up to to looking into Kundalini as a possibility for you? Well, it wasn't like that at all for me. Um, I was born and bred and raised as a Catholic, and so, uh, like, you know, it would have been a very traditional Catholic upbringing. Um, So that was, you know, the only way, actually. It was one of these absolutist um, belief systems that I I grew up with, where, you know, everybody else was going to hell. (laughs) But as I got older, as I got older, and there was a change, there was a change in Vatican II. There was a change, but I mean that was that's what my that's where I was rooted, you know. Um, but I always had a difficulty with a lot of things that I was told to believe in, and I was always seeking and searching, and I I was always looking for God for the truth, um, and so. I never left the church as such. I would still go, but I would have spent a lot of time going, oh, for God's sake, you know, and being frustrated with what I was um, having to deal with. But that, of course, was was helpful um, in my seeking. I never, I didn't meditate and I didn't um, get involved in yoga. I would have read a lot of self-help books around, you know, self-help as in, you know, Louise Hay, things like that. I... Things began to happen to me on a physical level. I know retrospectively, as I look back, there was activation sequences going on, but I didn't understand or realize. And um, I had a lot of fear and and such. I had horrendous fear. I had a lot of um, bad nighttime astral experiences. And so there was a lot of stuff going on in my life. Long story short, um, I had never heard of Kundalini ever. Um, and back in 2007, back in 2006, I began to, I would have intuitive things occur to me as well and happen. And um, I began, I just became a vegetarian. I, I always say meat left me. I stopped eating meat. And within a year, I went on a holiday and I had my Kundalini awakening experience. And it's different from what other people would have said. Like, for me, like Rosemary said, there were no whistles. Well, for me, there was. I had this incredible experience of um, absolute um, everything is nothing, the void, all the things that you would read about that I hadn't read about but retrospectively have. I understood I had the most amazing experience and I knew that what was touching me was divinity I began to I had visions all kinds of things occurred and I from that moment on the fears certain fears that I had were taken away completely and I spent a couple of weeks in this bubble of incredible love incredible connection with with God um, even though what was given to me was not in the context of my cultural or religious background there was no referencing whatsoever into Catholicism or saints or Jesus there was a lot of visions and things that were from an Eastern background that I had no familiarity with words such as Vishnu and um, different kinds of visions that I had no reference for at all. Um, and I knew that it was 
God. And so my my own understanding um, of God was totally shattered, totally obliterated um, in those in those few weeks. And then what began to happen, and so I had, you know, this fine, there was all kinds of physical things going on, infusions, bliss, everything. And then as time passed within a, a couple of weeks, I'm going to call it the, the divine left me. Now, I know it didn't, but the, the beautiful sensations and tactile experiences that I was feeling within my physical body that confirmed that this was holy, because it was holy, left me. And I was then left with very sharp, tactile. What was in my body then were things like um, my spine was alive. I, uh, uh, the physical, tactile sensations were different, and, and some fear began to creep into my equation then. My ego, you know, all my conditioning then that I would have had suddenly rushed back in. And as I look back in it, I can see that what occurred was the Kundalini showed me through experiencing what, you know, what God and divinity enlightenment is. I tasted it and I knew of it. And then I had to, I had to go and do the work. And there's a big gap of two years there that I'm not even going to go into um, with struggling. I still hadn't heard of the word Kundalini. And then I came across your... I had heard of the word Kundalini at one point, but I knew I wasn't, it wasn't for me. Um, and then when I opened myself, I came across your website immediately. And I read, I think it was just two of your... Um, Two of your teachings, Chris, and as I say, my heart expanded again. My Kundalini responded as well in my spine at that time, but it was the infusion of love, both from my heart outwards expanding and from the words that I read. I knew that what was happening within me was the Kundalini, and I knew that the teachings that you had to give confirmed what was happening. And so I opened my, I knew that, it was a Kundalini awakening that was happening for me. And that's how, that's how I began. And that's how then, you know, my ego and, you know, this, it's been quite difficult at times, but I have never, ever, ever doubted or not trusted the Kundalini within me and the Kundalini that led me to the Kundalini that comes through you. Um, yeah, so that's, that's, that's my story. So there was never, ever a question of um, me not knowing. Well, well, that's an amazing journey. Just like you, uh, you and Vashti both have very, very diverse uh, histories and experiences with this, and yet they all end up in the same place. You know, it, it's all directed towards the inner divine and listening to that quality of communication that the inner divine is. And remember, everybody, thank you, Amelia. Thank you for sharing that. Remember, everyone, that it is the noble qualities that will help you discern the appropriateness of any kind of a spiritual experience that you may be receiving. Uh, you know, watch out for that, that uh, absolutism Watch out for that. I mean, you know, Amelia, you know, she, 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 so eloquently, she, you know, she told her story so well. She, you know, she comes from a, a background of absolutist teachings, as does Rosemary, you know, with regard to different uh, aspects of Christianity. And, uh, and I'm sure that even in, with Vashti and his Ekankar experience, there was a certain level of absolutism that, that, uh, that, you know, you have to do things this way or you know this won't happen or you won't reach as fast you mentioned self-realization and and i just want to to really put it out there that these organizations as as they do mixed level of truth into their uh paradigm of control i guess is one way of putting it your community may lead you or even have you become born into, as Amelia was, born into a belief system that is very controlling and that has a very, very 
set level of experience and knowledge to teach you. But then, as you know, a certain thing will happen. Uh, you know, uh, something will occur, and it will not be up anymore. And you, you know, you will be caused to need to move into another area of, of expression and of of understanding. And the Kundalini will also be at the heart of this. Kundalini, Kundalini people are not accidental. Okay, yeah, you may you may be in a skiing accident, you may hit a tree, and as as I've known some people to have, or be in a car accident or something like that. But even that, even that would not be accidental. Not to say that chaos does not happen. Of course, chaos happens, but it's only chaos to five cents human being. It may not be so chaotic to those who are able to go beyond the five senses. Um, so as you come into contact with these organizations, um, as you may be uh, guided to take certain levels of information, take the, the levels of information that the Kundalini presence is giving you through the offices of that organization. Do not necessarily take the absolutism or the, the ultra-orthodox uh, dogma that certain group of, or that, that organization may be offering you. It isn't necessarily the way it's going to be. Vashti was with Ekinkar for 35 years. You know, that's, that's, a, 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 that's a chunk of time. You know, but in, within, that, within that time frame, he was given many, many, many levels of spiritual refinement that aided his kundalini, and he is within a self-realization equation right now, as is Anya, as is Rosemary, as is Josephine, as am I. Realize that one group, whether it be Ekinkar, Course in Miracles, Buddhism, Christianity, Zoroastrianism, uh, uh, you know, any of the, of, the, of the groups that we've talked about in this conversation today. Yes, there may be some kernels of truth, and it's up to you to discern those kernels of truth. But the main truth, the main truth is the validation that you give to your kundalini and the validation that it gives to you. Josephine here, she's had some amazing experiences here at the Autumn. She's had giant, she's, she's been in the presence of giants here. And I'm not, you know, I don't feel free to go into it because it's startling. It's startling information. And to some, to some it could be absolutely terrifying. And so I won't go into it. But uh, she has been in the presence of, of, of the Shakti Kundalini personified through, through, be, through the presence of, of a giant. This happens. This happens. Okay, this is part of the deal. This is part of the teaching. This is part of the training. This is not something that I am encouraging. I'm not saying, okay, Shakti, let's get together and let's let's talk about Josephine here. Well, okay, Chris, and what do you want to say about just well, don't you think she needs to be in the presence of giants? Well, okay, I guess we can. We can do that. No, this is not occurring. <laughs> Shakti doesn't need to go through me with that. She just does it. And she knows that I will that I will support that. She knows that because she knows me. So when you're dealing straight up, up with Kunini, you can begin to, to express or, or to expect a certain level of communication from the Shakti to you in the format that the Shakti knows that you can understand, that the Kundalini knows that you can understand. Uh, yes, yes, yes. It may send you to Yogananda. When I go to the Yogananda's ashram down there in Southern California, you know, I feel, I feel the veracity of his teachings. I feel the truth of his words. I feel the truth and the commitment that was given to him through his Kundalini and allowed him to do the great works that he did. So I really feel, you know, the, the legacy 
is there in energy. It's an energetic legacy that you can go down there, you can experience it. And it's the same here. When a person begins to, to, to stay in the white room, well, the white room is the Kundalini room. That's the one where all the students stay in. And that is the one that is that is going to begin to answer you in certain ways that allow you to understand. And then uh, another another very, very kind gentleman uh, put in a certain gift inside that room now that is there. And that's also helping people to reach their own enlightenment equation. Uh, if there is... If, if you would like to come to the, uh, the ashram, you can give me an email at fire for all. That's k f i r e f o r a l l at yahoo dot com, and you know, we can discuss that as well. Please be in a practice of the safeties for a certain period of time before you do that. Um, people have a hard time understanding. Who, when it comes so fast and furious in the early stages, you need to respond to it within the format of the safeties. But the safeties are broad enough and expansive enough and can be expanded into your life in such a way that is not absolutist in any way, shape, or form, but it does offer a, a series of signposts that will allow you to, to begin to understand what is occurring with you. And through that understanding, you can begin to discern for yourself how how the kundalini is is manifesting in your life and steve uh Jarecki, i know that uh that uh, you know you're you're having some questions about this uh currently within your process and you, you know you are, you are introduced to a, a higher subject matter that has also been uh you know coming to you within the uh Within the presence of your workshops and the and the and the different subjects that you come come into, but you're beginning to be introduced into the into the level of grace that you. Hello, oh boy. Hello. It says it's recording, Amelia, but I'm not sure. Oh, I guess it is. My iPad's playing with me. Uh, Steve, getting back to you. Introducing you to the level of grace that uh, that has even caused you to have a center and even caused you to begin to do the teachings that you're doing for people. And I honor you. I honor you in what it is you're doing, but also in what it is you're becoming. And it looks like I have Sanandia. Hello, Sanandia. Hello. How are you? Fine, and you? I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine, and and do you have anything you'd like to add to our conversation today? Well, I just timed in, so I missed half of the show. I'm sorry about that, but um, the topic seemed interesting. So I, I don't, I, I don't know. Um, do you see anything? Is there anything that you feel that you could tell me? I don't know. <laughs> you, you, you want me to, to give you a reading? Yes. <laughs> All right. It's that hard. <laughs> Second here. Looking behind you here. Oh. Sure. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Quite a long. You're 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 already involved in a in a program of. Uh, of uh shall we say spiritual study uh you can just tell that from your name um but i'm also seeing a, a heavy a heavy uh uh interaction with with uh shall we say discarnate uh consciousness behind you plugging into your third chakra what is it <clears throat> you do tell, tell me about yourself <clears throat> about myself uh, what would you like to know? Anything that you feel like, like telling me. There's something of a, of, a, of a nature that might dovetail with the kundalini. Okay. Um, what kind hmm. of a spiritual practice May are you in right now? A spiritual practice? Um, I do try to reach to a higher calling, which is God. I do try to 
get in contact with my myself. Um, uh, I, I think I'm at a point where I am um, at a spiritual awakening, if you will, and accepting okay. that. Uh, I've been told that I I, I am very intuitive. Um, <clears throat> Are you practicing Reiki? Is that like healing? Yeah, are you practicing like Reiki, uh, you know, Reiki this, Reiki that, Reiki masterism? No, I'm not. I've actually, in the in the past, I've prayed over people and hovered my hand over their bodies for healing, and it's, it's actually worked. <laughs> okay. Do you belong in, to any kind of a spiritual group? Um, no, only in Christian, but not any, like, really in particular. Well, I do see a, a long lineage uh, behind you um, that is once again plugged into the to the third uh, masculine of uh, 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 kind of a masculine nature. That could be the Christian the Christian uh, mm-hmm. scenario with you. Um, it's definitely influencing you. I would like what I have for you, my dear, is a a solid and firm uh, teaching to recognize the power. Of the sacred feminine, mm. the sacred feminine on this path. The, mm-hmm. God is not God is not a man sitting on a cloud. God mm-hmm. is 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 a, is a man and a woman sitting on a cloud, on the same chair actually. Mm-hmm. And uh, God's on the right side, and the woman is on the left side. If we choose to look at it. Uh, you know, from a five cents standpoint, and uh, it's 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 quite necessary for you in your life right now to begin to recognize sacred femininity, femininity as a as fifty percent of the power base uh, on this world that you are working with, and that be, is is wanting to begin to work through you. Uh, basically, mm-hmm. the sacred mother, the sacred mother, is calling you at this time. The okay. sacred father has had you long enough, and he's uh, saying, well, now it's time for you to get to know your mom. Oh, say that again? Now it's time for you to get to know your mom, your My, mo- your my mother, mother, my... Oh, my sacred mother, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. How do I do that? Sure, recognize that your body, recognize that the dirt, the trees... The uh, the blood in your veins is all an aspect of the sacred feminine. Mm-hmm. Recognize that that the the interaction between sacred male and sacred femininity is what causes life to begin on this world and gives us a vehicle yeah. of evolutionary expression that uh-huh. allows us to become a little less dependent upon the material plane. And and more accepting of love as a gateway towards the spiritual planes of experience. Right. Does that make any sense to you? Definitely, yeah, absolutely. I uh, I think I, I am. Um, I don't think I actually am at a point in my life where I am trying to get in touch with my body and soul, and I am trying to get in touch on the more spiritual um, realm of things, whether it be um, seeing things, whether it be good or bad, um, so that I can easily identify certain things. Well, yeah, I would I would definitely not just stick your eyes up into the multiverse and, and look and see. I would definitely begin to, if I were you, and just I'm just giving mm-hmm. you some suggestions here. Okay. I would begin to follow the noble behaviors. Do you know what those are? No. Forgiveness, tolerance, mm-hmm. patience, yes. self-discipline, love, mm-hmm. compassion, selfless service for others, yes. trust, trust. Mm-hmm. The divine within you, not the divine so much outside of you. You've you've had enough of the divine being recognized outside of you. Now it's mm-hmm. time for you to recognize the divine within you. Right. Okay. Those I are the, those are some those are some of the noble qualities. 
And as long as you begin to practice those noble qualities daily, Mm -hmm. consciously, well, then the sacred mother and you will begin to a tighter and, and, and more communicative relationship that perhaps has previously been the case. And as you begin wow. to, to, to expand into those areas, your kundalini will begin to respond to those mm-hmm. behaviors. That's pretty powerful. Yeah, I, I, definitely want to tap into that. So yeah, definitely. <laughs> yes, that. I, and you hit it kind right a, on the nail. That's kind of a kind of a beer barrel terminology there, but yeah, yeah. Try try mm-hmm. to tap into that, and uh, <laughs> and and yeah, yeah. Listen, listen to the rest of this broadcast, and and Sanandia, I'm going yes. to counsel you to really listen to the voice. Listen okay. to the kudal in my voice. Listen mm-hmm. to the conversation from the beginning as well. Uh, okay. This, because this, this will be archived, and you'll be able to, to hear this in an, in an archival fashion. Listen mm-hmm. to the voice. Let the voice reach into you. Listen to the voice of Rosemary and, and Fashji and Josephine and Amelia. And mm-hmm. feel the clarity. Feel the clarity of the energy as it expresses itself through them and through the through the diverseness of, of their of their histories and their experiences. And you will begin, you you will definitely begin to tie in because I don't think it's an accident that you're here. No, it's not. So really begin to embrace this if you feel it is appropriate for you to do so. Once again, as I was discussing earlier in the program, feel the clarity of truth within these Organizations that you may come into, uh, KAS One can be seen as a as a, as a quasi organization that is giving people Kundalini information. So feel the rightness of it for you. Okay. Let it speak to you in the way that your Kundalini wants it to be heard by you. <laughs> Don't feel manipulated. Don't feel like you need to. You know, like there's an absolutist quality to this because, as I mentioned earlier, you come into this equation with a very okay. different history, a very different history of interaction on this world. Like Amelia and like Rosemary, you have a Christian background, and this is really cool. And I think, Josephine, you also have a Christian background, yes? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so you're in good company, my dear. Yes, and actually... My family, uh, my mom, she's very spiritual, and my grandmother, she is very, very spiritual. Like on my father's side, um, they're, she's very spiritual. And they're, okay. they're actually the ones who gave me that name. They gave me my name. Sanandia? Yes. Oh, ah, okay. Well, it's a beautiful name. It's a beautiful <laughs> name, you. my dear. And I, and I and just from looking at you, I can tell it belongs to a beautiful individual. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. And thank you, my dear, for calling in. Keep listening well, on the phone. You. I'm going to put you okay, on the well. blue here. And keep on listening. And so that's it, everybody. Sanandia. Uh, Sanandia, welcome to this program. And thank you for calling in. I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, and uh, I'm going to ask Amelia to come on. And, and Amelia, do you have any announcements that you'd like to make? Anything? And, and then I'm going to bring Rosemary on to, because I think she has some announcements too. Sure, I have, Chris. And I suppose I'd like to just say before <laughs> before I go as well that please, you know the, the background that I had in Christianity had a lot, such a lot of positive things around devotion and you know do unto others and that sort of thing. But it has a huge, um, you know, it's the organizational aspect of what it was promoting was huge, the church. And one of the things, and that wasn't necessarily a good thing, the whole organizational aspect. And, and what I would like to say is that, yes, what you said there that, you know, CAS1 is, a, you know, an organization. But the thing is, the safeties and the noble behaviors that are, you know, in inverted commas, promoted or suggested 
for a person within the context of a Kundalini awakening, that has nothing to do. They're not about the program. They're not about prism. They're not about, you know, in any way connected, really. They're all about the Kundalini awakening for the person that is within a Kundalini awakening. That's their purpose. So, like, to me, Kaz does not have aspects of the organizational um, attachments that others that others other organizations do and that's very important the the noble behaviors and the sanctities are totally for the for the benefit and for the person and now i, I agree. Think I know. no no thank you <laughs> thank you for that clarification it's absolutely true yeah it is it is and and they well, maybe are not, the maybe, most... maybe not absolutely true but maybe it's <laughs> <laughs> but it, is, say, well, it, is true. it is it is the truth of the intention that they were yes. offered in yes. yes yes so what i would like to do now is um let people know that are listening and many of you already know this that there is no um charge or um, nothing is expected for any of the teachings that chrism gives but donations are accepted um and it is the only way, really, that the work that is done is um, supported financially. So if you're in a position to make a donation, and if you, if you want to do that, it would be very, very welcome. Um, the website you can go to is www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com. And on the upper right-hand corner, you will see a donate button, and it is very, very easy to do. Just press the button and and take it from there. And um, again, there's absolutely no pressure whatsoever for you to donate. But if you want to do so and are in a position to be able to do so, as I say, it would be very welcome. www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot. Dot com and I am um, thank you everybody and thank you um Fashti it was great hearing your voice and Rosemary and Josephine and everybody and um thank you Chris and see you next week. Thank, thank you Amelia don't go away yet. Uh, and Rosemary hello again are you are you are you with us here? I am. You would you like to make an announcement as well? Yes, I would. Uh, Eileen and I are working on the seminar of September, September 27th and 28th. And I did my uh, first film screening with the Kundalini movie, and people were very uh, inspired by that. Kristen, thank you for your work on that. Uh, that group, it's a little early in the whole process. I'll be going back there in August and also participated in a, an expo at one of the the large uh, spiritual communities in Minneapolis. And that was the first time I've done that. And it was very inspiring for me and to find people open to listening to what uh, I have learned. And um, and, and what? Um, how did people get a hold of you with regards to the seminar? 651-452-3161. Or Rosemary G at usinternet.com. Okay, and this is how they can get information about. And where is it? It's in uh, the St. Paul side of the cities. And uh, it will, Minnesota. You're, it's in Minnesota yes. and it's on the St. Paul side of the city. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, and, and when, it, when is it again? The seminar itself will be in in the hotel where we have rooms uh, put aside for people that will okay. be staying uh, out of from out of town. And I'm I'm committed to for as much as the human commitment can do, is that there be a large number of people here in from the Twin Cities. And my heart's desire is that there be a Kundalini community here. What date, uh, Rosemary? What date, Rosemary? Uh, September 27th and 28th. September 27th and 28th uh, in the the state of Minnesota in the city of St. Cloud, right? No. No, the St. Paul side is really the city of St. Egan. Paul. Folks know where that is. but <laughs> And we're really not far from a lot of places where we do have people in the community. 
think so. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> there is such a place. There is. <laughs> see? see oh. like <laughs> Somehow I do. <laughs> There's a anyway. city called Embarrass, too. <laughs> Embarrass, Minnesota. Okay. It's not there. Well, thank you. Thank you, dear Rosemary. Thank you for going to the expo. I'm I'm really, really happy that you're out there. You're you're showing people uh, the Kundalini movie. You're introducing people to the idea that they may not be crazy. They may just be Kundalini awakened. I mean, what, what a nice thing. What a beautiful what a beautiful service. There you go. There's yeah. there's a noble there's a noble quality in, in action right there, my dear. Yes. Well, thank you, Rosemary. I'm going to go ahead and put you in the blue here. Thank you, my dear. And Amelia, I would like to say thank you for 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 being the uh, originator of this show and and for for this noble quality of selfless service given to you and John uh, into the populations. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Kristen. And a good night to you, my dear. And a good day or good night or good afternoon or good morning to any of you that are out there listening right now. And we'll talk again next week. Thanks for joining the show. <laughs>